All right. Very good. Well, I know I wasn't here today, but uh, I did need to do this interview with Congressman John Lewis because um, it's the only time he could do it. It was on Sunday, and so we're doing it, and, and Allie's there in the studio uh, playing it. So I appreciate that, Allie. So I am very honored to have on the phone with me right now uh, Congressman John Lewis uh, from Georgia and, of course, uh, notable civil rights leader. Congressman, how are you, sir? I'm doing very well, sir. It is good to to be in uh, our uh, supporting and campaigning for Hillary Clinton. I've known her and uh, former President Clinton for more than 30 years. They've been wonderful friends. Um, I think they have done so much to make America better. I'm convinced that she is one of the smartest, one of the most gifted individuals that I ever met. Well, sir, uh, talk about making America better. Uh, That is your whole career. Uh, You gave me the honor back in uh, 2012 at the Democratic National Convention uh, in Charlotte when I was walking to lunch and I spotted you and I imposed myself upon you and asked you if I could take a picture that my my daughter took of us. It is on my wall. And I can tell you that there is nobody, and I've got a lot of pictures on my wall, who inspires people to stand up and say, that man, that man uh, we honor. And uh, so I and I do because you're you're everything you've done for the whole cause of uh, civil rights uh, and simply trying to make uh, America a better place. Uh, I thank you for that. And again, thank you for letting me stop you on the streets of Charlotte. Well, sir, I'm flattered that and honored that you would take a picture with me and place it on your wall. That is uh uh, I remember being in Charlotte at the uh, at the convention. Right, it was a wonderful convention, and it was wonderful uh, to have the opportunity to meet you. Well, I I, I thank you. And so, so uh, Congressman, uh, Iowa caucuses will start just about an hour after this program air, uh, airs and is done on Monday evening. Uh, and I don't know how much you know about Iowa, but you are also steeped in knowledge about politics and campaigns. Uh, what do you think is going to happen? Well, I have faith, and, and I truly believe with the ground operation here that uh, Mrs. Clinton uh, will prevail. Um, that many, many people are working, doing unbelievable work. Um, several years ago, during the 60s, I visited many of the colleges and universities here, recruiting young people, students, professors to come south to work in the civil rights movement. Religious leaders, faith leaders came. And I think her message is a message uh, that is good not just for Georgia or South Carolina, but it's good for people uh, in this great state. Well, uh, we we will find out. Uh, I, I I suspect that she's going to do very well uh, in there. And then, of course, on to New Hampshire. And there, there's a whole different demographic in New Hampshire. But then comes South, South Carolina, and uh, all the polls <laughs> have her doing very well here. Well, I'm convinced. And, you know, I've lived in the South all my life. I was born and grew up in, in Alabama, attended school in Tennessee, and I worked for many years in the 11 states of the old Confederacy, uh, and I was head of the Voter Education Project. Mrs. Clinton understand the South. Uh, being the First Lady of Arkansas, working with legal service, helping our children, our young people, receive the best possible health care and education. She understands the region. I believe, I am convinced that she will speak to South. Well, uh, I, I, the, the polls clearly indicate that they believe that you uh, are right. Um, I had on the radio the other day, uh, I had uh, Congressman Emanuel Cleaver on, of course, and you are the 
uh, senior uh, chief deputy whip uh, in the House Democratic Caucus, and he also serves uh, in, in a position like this. You both work with our congressman, a friend of mine, uh, Congressman James Clyburn. Uh, what's it, uh, yeah, nobody anticipates that even and with a, with uh, a president minutes, Hillary Clinton that the, that the, the, the distribution of, of politics so in our House of Representatives and, uh, is going to change like much. Said, do do you see any opportunity for it, for more congeniality? for more working together in, between the two parties in the House? And, uh, well, I, I, sure I do that you are see the possibility, and, and a real possibility, with uh, Mrs. Clinton as President of the United States. She would have what is it? What's in the this to ability it, uh, work the to bring that, people uh, together across to. party lines. It's a really simple formulation, uh, I've known Jim Clyburn um, for many, many they, years, for more than 50 exactly years, right, so it works during the early days of the sit-in. Oh, we got to know each other uh, in April 1960 when I first met him, and then again I met him uh, in October 1960, and we've been working together ever since. And it's an honor for me uh, to work with him every day in the Congress. Well, and I'm sure he would say exactly the same thing about you also. So uh, what do you think is going to happen on the Republican side? Do you even want to hesitate a guest? Well, I, I don't know. I, I must tell you, I have never seen anything like it. I don't want to predict anything about the other side. Uh, it, it is very strange. And uh, uh, I have to let them make their own decision and uh, fight it out between them. I don't want to get involved in that too late. Uh, and, of course, I am talking with uh, uh, Congressman uh, John Lewis from Georgia. Uh, Congressman, looking back at your esteemed uh, years uh, of working w- at the local level uh, as a mayor, as a member of Congress, working always to promote goodwill uh, and and the civil rights uh, of all Americans. When you look back over your career, is there anything that you said, oh, I might have done this differently? No, I- when I look back, there may be some things I said in, in a speech, and I said, maybe I should have said that, maybe I should. But for the most part, I, I don't regret uh, what I've been able to do or try to do. Uh, I believe in the, the way of peace, the way of love, and the philosophy and the discipline of nonviolence. I think we have to lay down the burden of the division and, and uh, separation. As I said to a group today uh, at church, that we are one people. We are one family. We all live in the same house, the American house. And it doesn't matter whether we're black or white, uh, Asian American, Hispanic, or Native American. We must learn to live together as brothers and sisters. Uh, abs- absolutely. Uh, and one last question, then I'm going to let you go, because you've been very kind to, to give me time, sir. Um, the Reverend Martin Luther King, Jr., do you ever think and speculate of of what might have happened with his career in the Civil Rights Movement had he lived? Well, I think about it a great deal. If Martin Luther King, Jr. had lived, I, I really believe this, that we would be much farther down that road toward the creation of the beloved community. But we respect the dignity and the worth of every human being. And I, I, I think if Robert Kennedy had lived, I, I think he would, would have been elected president. And you would have had a Martin Luther King Jr. and a Bobby Kennedy working together for the common good. Well, sir, thank you for everything that you have done. Uh, the the nation is grateful to you. I've been speaking with Congressman John Lewis of uh, Georgia and, of course, a uh, notable civil rights leader. Congressman, thank you very much, sir. And we will, we will all be watching tonight, won't we? Yes, we all will be watching. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir.